Hello darlings, it's Tess and today's video is going to be a Sarwan Ulta tour of my Sarwan Ulta for 2022. Now you guys probably know because we've just done Vlogoween on this channel that I wanted to get really really extra for the month of October this um, year and so a lot of that included sort of colourful like Halloween specific stuff the way most people know it um, e.g. the vintage style pillow that you can see behind me that I bought you know that kind of fabulous cheerful Halloween but obviously October is also the month of Sarwan which is when the veil is at its thinnest so it's a very 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 strong time for um, the witchcraft side of me as well um, so I've wanted to make sure that I connect with that and um, that I uh, remember it and that I honor it so one of the biggest ways that I connect to my magical practice and to every single Sabbath um, or uh, celebration in the wheel of the year every festival whatever you want to call it is I create an altar and I go all out because I have a shelf my altar is the top of a shelf and two-thirds of it is devoted to my art magic practice so that's the stuff that kind of sticks around there's a few tweaks but it stays there but then the other third that is over on the right is seasonal so depending on um, which season it is or uh, more likely which um, uh, festival has either been most recent or is coming up um, it'll be dedicated to that you guys have seen my altar tours on this channel before um, and you can see how extra they are uh, because being um, a maximalist and an artist it means that my altars are just always going to pop off, you know, a couple of minimalist things, even though people's minimalist altars look absolutely beautiful. That's just not my style. I can't abide it. <laughs> so we all have our different styles of altars and mine is just to be ridiculous. Um, but uh, for this Sarwin, something that I wanted to do was create something really special to honour this Sarwin because I've had a bit of a weirdo year I haven't really felt guided like I felt like everything I do is somehow going to be the wrong thing and that every effort I make is going to come to nothing and I was just really hungry to be kind of connected to something spiritually and to really feel better basically um, and so what I wanted to do, and my mother very graciously let me do this, is um, out in our living room, you can tell that this is not my bedroom, um, uh, we have a gorgeous wooden antique table, which is as of where you guys are right now, it is over there. Um, and normally we keep uh, plants or maybe cards that we've got recently like you know how you can stand up a card like that when you open it um, and also my fishy Francois um, is there but for Sarwin because it's an antique table and so much of Sarwin is about honoring the people who came before you I thought that this antique surface would just be a really great way to put together a Sarwin altar and to just make it pop off really um, and make it even better than I could with the one in my room. So I have a little one in my room that is sort of a uh, rainbow colorful Sarwin but make it art magic. <laughs> um, but my traditional one out here that's got sort of more imagery that people associate with witches like you know um a crystal ball and a black candle um, and a skull and even a mini pumpkin that my mother found for me which obviously makes me very happy because um, I can't always find those each year um, 
um, as well as a couple of other more traditionally witchy looking things on it. Um, so there's more room for all of those on the table out here than there would be in my room. So I have loved my Sarwan altar the last couple of years, but I wanted to um, develop it into even more this year. So that's what I decided to do. And the proof of that is that I actually changed it two times. So I put it together and I thought that it was kind of okay. Like there was some cool stuff, but it just didn't feel right. And so then I did something that I never usually do. I took everything off of it and I started again. And then version two was almost perfect. Um, but then I changed it a little bit into version three because of something very significant that I'm going to talk about more, which is basically that um, I'm having more strength in my connection with the Celtic goddess Brigid, who is uh, the goddess of fire and the hearth and uh, creativity and a whole lot of other stuff. Like I've just been really into sort of um, honoring her the last little bit. I've always been interested, but what draw, uh, drew me to that is that I had a big feather in place in my altar um, that was in a silver cup at the back of it. And I originally put that there because I've been seeing feathers everywhere this year and I haven't really known what that's for. Um, and so I took this feather out and I gave it a more um, important spot on my altar because it just felt like the right thing to do and then the next day I was just randomly searching about Bridget because I just felt pulled to that <laughs> um, and I found out at that moment alone I didn't know this before I found out that one of her offerings that people often um, leave for her are white feathers So yeah, um, anyway, that uh, gave me several feelings, but um, yes, the final version of the altar um, is very close to the second version. It's just been moved around a little bit to make room for that feather. So this is the longest introduction that has ever existed. So let's get into showing you this altar and um, seeing what uh, you think of it. Hopefully you like it. Um, another thing that I will add is that I've been doing single card oracle pulls for the whole month of October where I draw um, one card every night um, and check up the meaning of it because doing these huge spreads was really overwhelming to me so I just wanted to dip my toe a little bit into the deck um, by doing single card pulls and I drew several cards over and over and over and I'll probably talk about that at, at some point in another video of you know what I believe they were kind of trying to do but one of them was alter which I think I got three times let me just check that I've got it written in my grimoire but also in my phone I pulled the alter card three times so that's one out of 44, there are 44 cards in the deck, single card pulls each night, and I have drawn that card three times. So uh, yeah, I was definitely being guided to make sure the altar was right, that it was beautiful, that I connected to it, and I really feel like I do, and that's why I am so excited to show it to you. So. Oh my god, let's go. So this was the second version of the altar. You guys saw the first version just a second ago. And so I was originally happy with this, like it was okay. Um, I loved it more, I will admit, when I got the little pumpkin um, to go in the middle there. That was just really, really fun. I always love to have 
a mini pumpkin on my Sarwin altar because you can't always find them in the southern hemisphere um, but I was able to get one so that was good but then I kept drawing the altar oracle card over and over and so I just felt drawn to changing it again and so the change that I decided to make as I mentioned was to take the white feather that was in the silver cup at the back and place it into a more prominent position next to the pumpkin. Now next to it is an offering bowl of graveyard dirt and also a bit of bread for Bridget as well as my Celtic pin because Bridget is a Celtic goddess and I was just feeling really connected to Bridget for a bunch of reasons that I will say in a um, future video. Um, I had a little stand for the tarot card, the oracle card rather, that I pulled every day. I would display it um, on this thing and I have the camera next to it to honor my uh, practice of creating with a camera. My pentacle bell also is in the front this skull is the one that I rescued and decorated. The music box is to honor Yaz because she usually watches over it on my art magic altar. Um, some bread there for Bridget, as I said. I've actually forgotten the purpose of this spell bag, which is like definitely not good, but it looks nice and Sarwini with the brown uh, netting of it. So um, I wanted to still include it and maybe I can um, change the purpose of it at some point. Um, fortune telling hand is always a classic for my Sarwin altar just as a bit of a darker aesthetic. Um, there is the silver cup with a couple of cleansing wands to represent that I want to cleanse myself of negative energy for the coming witch's new year. There is my moon um, model inside the cool copper claw cup um, that I painted this year. And again, using antiques in honor of past family members, this is a beautiful statue of my mother's that I believe belonged to her grandmother, just to give some interest and some height. Now over here on the left is a space that is designated to those ancestors. The woman in the oval frame is made by my grandmother and the big picture of the little girl is um, my other grandmother, maternal, when she was young. So we have some uh, Sarwin crystals, um, including the little amber bug and then the death's head moth, moth which I always love, black candle, and then the Ouija board felt part um, that is an eye. I knew I wanted to put that in because I like the color, but also because um, uh, Sarwin is a really good time for Ouija board use um, because the veil is so thin. And so yeah, there it is. That's actually put on an old writing thing, by the way, where you would store your inks and then your uh, pens. So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing my sort of one altar of the year um, that is the most traditionally witchy in terms of aesthetic. Beep. Who is beeping me? My friends, because I do actually have some of those. <laughs> Um, but I hope you enjoyed seeing this altar that is um, the most witchy one that I make all year in terms of the traditional witchy aesthetic. Um, and I always love creating it for that reason. Um, and I'm really drawn to it this year because of this experience that I've had with um, Bridget and with my amazing Sarwin Oracle deck that I reviewed, that I drew from every night and that I kept displayed on the altar uh, behind the uh, Oracle card stand where I would display each one that I had just drawn. Um, but 
I'm feeling a lot more centered in my practice now. I'm feeling a lot more guided and I feel like I did the right thing this Sarwan, like rather than forcing myself to do some kind of ritual or spell work that felt, you know, too much and that I didn't have time for. I feel like creating this altar and drawing these cards and keeping a log of what they all meant, I feel like that was the right thing for me to do for this Sarwan season and I'm really, really glad I did it. So, um, if you enjoy my magical witchy content, then make sure to subscribe to see more of it in the future. And I really hope that it can all be as interesting to you as this video was, if you did indeed enjoy it. Um, so, whoever you are, whether you choose to stay or go, remember, I love you, keep going.